Thank you so much to Chime for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. Money can't buy happiness, but not worrying about your money comes close. That's where Chime can help you smile more. They were named the number one most loved banking app. Yeah, that's right, listeners. With payday up to two days early and fee-free overdrafts up to $200, they offer financial peace of mind in your wallet. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. See for yourself why Chime is so loved at Chime.com slash TK. That's Chime.com slash TK. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See Chime.com slash Spot Me. Chime was the 2021 number one most downloaded banking app in the U.S. according to Aptopia. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Making Moves. I'm here today with a stranger, Iman Abdullah. Welcome to the show. I have never met before. This oh, is so weird. You no. Know. We're like internet friends. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I guess to give you guys the 411, Iman and I kind of met through my old roommate, Peyton, yes. who we love. Shout out, Peyton. Shout out, Peyton. Come visit us again. Uh, well, Peyton's moving here soon. I know, I'm so, know, excited. I'm so excited. I'm going to stalk her. I'm going to sleep like in her bed. <laughs> we'll have to like, go boyfriend. out and stuff with her and Joe. But anyway, Iman works for the fabulous brand, We're Not Really Strangers. And can you tell me a little bit about it for someone that doesn't know what it is? Yeah, so it's a card game and movement all around just creating meaningful meaningful connections. Mm-hmm. It's like, I feel like, dominated the digital space. It's so, it, it feels so weird because I'm so close to it uh-huh. that I, I don't know if I You're like, this feel is my baby. that way, but yes, for sure. Uh-huh. And how long ago was it started? Because from my understanding, you our best friends with the founder Mm -hmm. and you were there when it started. Yeah. So she's been working on the game for like maybe eight years now. Mm -hmm. And And this is Kareen. This is Kareen. Kareen's my best friend. And at the very beginning, we just go to random cafes and it was like a PDF on our phone and we'd have to be those weird girls like, hey, do you want to play this like game? We'd go up to random strangers. We'd be like, hey, do you want to play this game on a PDF on one of our phones? And like people would agree to it. So that was like around five or six years ago. Okay. And then now it's like what it is today. It's insane. So I feel like I first found y'all through the Instagram Mm -hmm. and like all of like the emo, my emo friends like reposting, you know, the little like quotes or the aesthetic quotes on their story, like subtly trying to like subtweet like how they're feeling via a guy that hurt them. Absolutely. So can you kind of explain that too? Like, is that what really made you guys viral is like the reposting? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting because Kareen made the Instagram account to promote the card game. But then now our Instagram is more famous than the, like some of uh-huh. our, the followers don't even know we have a card game. So yeah, it just was really her talking about her feelings and posting random stuff on, on the internet that she thought was cool. And then... Other people thought it was cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, I feel like it's so intimate, like the stuff that you guys yeah. say, but everyone can relate. Yeah, we're big believers in what's most personal is most universal. So anything that's posted is usually something that one of us has gone through or one of us like can very specifically relate to. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, oh, what is like everyone need to hear right now? It's mostly just what do I need to hear or what did a friend, what is a friend going through? And that's always what is like the easiest place to talk from because it's so real. Uh Uh-huh. I feel like that's a quote or saying I need to like drill into my head because sometimes when I'm creating my own content, I'm like, what could help others? And I'm like, no, like what am I actually going through? Because that's what hits. And that's the most helpful too. Yeah. Because it's so, it's so weird how something so, so, so specific can be so deeply relatable because I feel like it's like oh no that's too that's too niche no one's gonna relate to it Mm -hmm. and then everyone relates it's just bizarre and like the weirdest thing ever and it feels really really vulnerable because also the more specific it is to you the more vulnerable it's just all this thing that's just 
Hashtag be real. <laughs> Hashtag be real. Um, can you provide an example of like, you know, what's something that a lot of people would repost on their story or like, uh, you know, from one of your guys's posts? Um, that's like weirdly intimate. Every single post that gets posted. So the funny like joke in our office is that you always know exactly what someone on the team is going through by what's like, like we all, t- there's three of us that tweet. So I remember, or we also have um, a newsletter and we have text messages that we send like community texts. Uh-huh. So I remember like during my last breakup, I sent out a text to our followers about like, a, some breakup text uh-huh. and all my coworkers text me are you okay what's going on did you just have a breakup They're like, like who hurt you <laughs> literally so like for one everyone on your team knows what's going on with you just every day because of what you're writing and the things that you're making it's very obvious mm-hmm. but then also once those things are posted in out in the world those are usually the things that people repost the most um and people can also tell when you're forcing it. There are times where we're forcing it, where it's like, we got to get something up on Instagram. And so we force something and then it tanks and it's like, well, yeah, duh. Yeah. So I feel like when you get an audience that's so, that wants you to be real and expects that from you, they can also tell when you're faking it, which is so cool because it holds you accountable in a really cool way mm-hmm. um, and kind of forces you to be real as often as you can. But I feel like when people know you're forcing it. It's also like a wake up call too. like, fuck, OK, time to just recenter and figure out what I actually want to uh-huh. say. It's, it kind of reminds me of like when artists come out with an album after their breakup. Yes. Or I feel like that's like yes. artists best albums yes. is when it's like, damn, like I'm thinking of Taylor Swift, like really like I'm channels. The yeah. Channels her energy yeah. or, you know, her feelings into her art, which is essentially what you guys do. Yeah. That's all we're doing all day, which is really cool that I can go on a date for research or yeah. I can do random things or like if I'm going through something, it's actually great at work. So mm-hmm. everything, it's a cool lens to look through. It's like, like lemons into lemonade. Exactly. <laughs> lemons so lemonade. can you kind of like explain to me why the heck did Corrine come up with this idea? Like this is insane. It's yeah. so simple, but so genius. <laughs> Kareen is... We have the card game right here, you guys, if you're watching on YouTube. Anyone who's ever met Kareen, she leaves a lasting impression. She is so smart, such a genius, so funny, a little, like, kooky. She would come over and just always ask me a million questions, and at first I was kind of suspicious of her, like, what? Like, are you real? (laughs) Like, she would just be so curious and just want to hang out and just give a bunch of compliments and she's just the sweetest person in the world, which also kind of throws you off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So she has always been into photojournalism. She was always photographing for the yearbook in high school. She didn't really even like eat lunch with friends. She was just always photographing people. That's like how everyone knows her. Uh-huh. And from high did school. you guys, how did you, how do you know her? We know her, for, I know her from mutual friend. Oh, okay. So th- you guys weren't in high school or anything no, together? No, we were not in high school okay. together, but Happy. I just know this yeah. about her. <laughs> um, so she's just always been super passionate about people and connection and questions. It's so authentically her. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, when you know Kareen, she would obviously make something like this. Got it. So it just felt really, she would wake up in the morning and go photograph people on Skid Row just by herself and just be having a blast. And I was like, are you going to be okay? Like, you're just going to go by yourself. Mm-hmm. I'll be fine. She would just go and photograph people and have the best time. And um, then she met a stranger out on the street once and he told her, you're going to write a book one day and it'll be called Rowley Strangers. And Wait, so, are you serious? Yeah. And so that's where she got the name from. And then from there, she started making the game. That was like a long time coming. A random person came up to her on the street? She, that she was fo- that she was interviewing and photographing. Okay. She would just find random people on the street that she thought, and okay, this psychic? person might be interesting. No. Okay. It was a random guy on the street. Um, I think he was in a wheelchair. And she was like, this guy looks like he might have an interesting story. And so she went up to him and that's what he told her. And so then she um, kind of then had a name behind what she was doing and kind of went from there. But yeah, Kareen's just, if you know her, this is the most obvious product that Yeah, she it's create. more so like pas- passion yes. versus like, let me start a business. Exactly. Got it. This okay. is like what she wants to know about every human that even walks 
buy her on the street. Okay, okay, okay. I love this. How did you start working with We're Not Really Strangers? Um, at first, so Korean's super, super creative, and I feel like those kind of people are just not great at like the more admin stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I always make the joke that Oprah could have emailed her and she would have no clue. So uh-huh. I would just go on her phone, look at her emails, and I'd be like, "How are you living like that? Like you're not." That's gonna, kind of me, honestly. You're not gonna. You're not. This isn't going anywhere, babe. <laughs> So I would just take a day off work once a week. Not She wasn't paying me or anything. I would just help her because I was like, okay, you're going to need this help. Because you were friends. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we were best friends. Well, that's really nice of you. So I just go over once a week and we just start having fun and do random stuff. And I was doing some of the brand partnerships. No clue what I was doing. I was talking to our manufacturers over in China and like helping to get the game made. Had no clue what Not I was doing. Not getting paid, just like vibing, having just, fun? Just vibing and having fun. And we genuinely were having the best. Those uh-huh. are like some of the best times of my life. And How old were you? Um, uh, maybe 20. Okay, or 20. fun. Yeah. yeah. So it was just fun. We'd do events together and it just felt more like best friend time. And then I dropped out of college and I was nannying half the week and helping Korean half the week. And then eventually it turned into a full-time position. I came on as the first employee, and it was very Hell much... yes, Iman. <laughs> it was very much like I was just doing head of operations. I didn't know what that meant. I was like, what should my title be? And she was like, I don't know. Like, maybe just do some research. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. So I was just doing all the stuff that I had no clue how to do. C-O-O. And just figured it out. <laughs> and then I think being around Kareen and understanding her so deeply, it helped me understand her vision and the brand so deeply. Mm-hmm. So then I slowly, slowly, slowly started to become more creative. And now my job is 100% creative. And I do no type of ad. I'm actually not very good at it. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Then I started my first step into more creative was um, I was handling our customer experience because I feel like this was such a human connection based brand. And I was like, I wouldn't want our email like our customer experience emails to be just like a normal like a re- random person talking mm-hmm. to you. So I was like, how can it feel? What can it sound like? How could it be different? So then that kind of started and I started helping out with branding and hiring and interviewing and things like that. And then now I do a lot of our creative too. Mm-hmm. And for creative, do you mean like coming up with questions for the games, coming up with like yeah. how the packaging looks? Or? Uh, not so much the packaging. I think... Um, Kind of. I don't do any type of design, but I think because I know the brand so well, I know what we would and wouldn't do. Yeah. You're doing a lot of more copy. Yeah. So I so I write some of the questions. I help with our email newsletter. I help with like overall growth strategy. I do our community texts, our Instagram, Instagram stories, captions, DM. Like Mm -hmm. I think anyone who works at a startup will understand like you just kind of do everything. Mm -hmm. So my role is creative strategy for the brand, but it just kind of ends up. Yeah, it just kind of ends up being. I might make a TikTok. I might. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of random. I'm sure it's very spontaneous yeah. and keeps you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> keeps me on my toes. Yeah. Keeps you on my toes, yeah. So fun. So I want to know a little bit more about you, though. Where are you from? T- like, tell me some fun facts about you. I'm from Personally. Sherman Oaks, California. Sherman Oaks? Yeah, like okay. Los Angeles, Sherman Oaks. Um, grew up here my whole life. Love it. Would never move anywhere else. Um, I was someone who never knew what I wanted to do for a living. Um, never thought about it too much. Still don't think about it too much. I've just always been vibing. <laughs> <laughs> Certified viber. <laughs> Certified viber. Growing up, I wanted to be a, like, either a speech-language pathologist or maybe an audioologist. I was super into deaf studies, and I was fluent in sign language, and I was just obsessed with, like, the culture and signing and maybe being an interpreter so that was my life so growing up my best friend's parents were both deaf and I'd go to her house every single day and I'd see them all signing and I was like what the heck are they talking about I want to (laughs) know so her mom was I don't want to be left out I didn't want to be left out anymore so um her mom was a teacher at the local community college so I started taking her classes in the ninth grade and I ended up just becoming fluent by the time I graduated high school and then I was going to transfer and do that um, but a lot of colleges actually don't recognize American Sign Language as a second language because it's English. So oh. you kind of have to do like a very specific deaf studies program, which was only at a few colleges. And mm-hmm. then I kind of got stuck there. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I started learning French and I 
was going to do like French, American Sign Language, and English, and then I ended up dropping out altogether. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was always kind of interested in either being a teacher or just like helping kids. I was always super passionate about those kind of things. Um, So yeah. Well, it seems like, I mean, that's very fascinating. It seems though, like now you're in an epic position that's really great for you and your personality. This is what it seems. Okay. But it also seems like you didn't really like game plan or strategize getting this. So my question is like, what advice would you give someone? Because a lot of, I'm a firm believer is like, things will happen to you or come to you if they're meant to be. Yeah. I'm I'm one of those people. So what advice would you give to someone that's like, I have no idea what I want to do. I'm kind of good at this. I'm interested in this. I want to move. I have an itch to move this to the city. Like someone that just graduated was in your position a little. Like what advice yeah. would you give to them? They're just like eh, going through a transformative year. I would say start absolutely anything because it's very easy to narrow it down rather than start from nothing Mm -hmm. so if there's anything you're interested in like painting fingernail like it could be the the strangest passion that has nothing to do with what you're interested in I would say start absolutely anything that you can because it helps you figure out okay I absolutely don't want to do this I worked Mm -hmm. retail um like while I was in college I was so bad at it no one's ever been worse at a job than me my managers all made fun of me I don't know how I wasn't fired every day I was always waking up hungover I was going (laughs) in an hour late I was folding all the clothes wrong I was like oh this is like I will do nothing having to do with this for the rest of my life yeah you figure out what you don't like (laughs) or what you're bad at it's it's very easy to figure out what you don't like then know exactly what you want to do um and also sometimes maybe you're just Doing a job so that you're able to be, you know, have financial freedom and do what you want to do on the weekends and be with your friends and people that you love. I think um, it's really nice and fun to be super, super passionate about what you do. But I don't think that's like the only job anyone can do. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say start absolutely anything. Try things, do things, fail. I've done my job wrong. I'm still doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing the same job for five years or six at Mm -hmm. almost six at this point I do something wrong every single day and I get something wrong and I figure out what I've had like 20 job titles (laughs) um I've been very terrible at things and it's also helped me figure out what I want to do so I would say do not expect to know what you want to do right away that Mm -hmm. that feels people who know exactly what they want to do feel like more in the minority to me but I feel like everyone always thinks everyone has everything figured out um I feel like you're I, every time I think I know what I want to do, I'm always wrong. Yes, correct. Me too. Yeah, me too. It always changes. So for the yeah. better. For the better. For the better. Well, I love that. Um, I think that's great advice, and I'm so excited about the position you're in now because it seems like you're absolutely killing it, and you're happy. I'm so I love happy. that. Thank you so much to Chime for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? Didn't think so. At Chime, that's exactly what they do. With their secured Chime credit builder, Visa Credit Card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase in 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. To start your credit journey with Chime, sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash TK. That's Chime.com slash TK. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank N.A. pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to your score may vary, and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass. ATMs in a... Word on the street is that you're a big fan of would you rather questions. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted to throw some at you. I'm a, oh my gosh. <laughs> some insane so ones. <laughs> this is really funny. Okay, I'm the biggest would you rather fan. Okay. 
Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a few, and I know you have a, a few insane questions for me. Yes, I do. Yvonne told me to bring me a alcoholic beverage because she wanted me to have the option to drink yes. instead of not answering, which yes. it scares me slightly. Yeah. Anyway, um, I guess you can, you'll want to answer these, I feel like, but you can drink if you feel uncomfortable. Okay. There's only a few. So first question is, Iman, would you rather never have kids or never fall in love? <gasps> <laughs> Those are my two biggest priorities in life are having kids. I just want a bunch of kids because I recently had a birthday party where everyone had to dress up like me and I just had a hundred <laughs> clones and I feel like I want a lot of kids and I just want a million clones of myself running around. That's an iconic theme. Yeah, dress up like me. I think that's the theme of my life is like clones. So, um, <laughs> wow, that's really hard. I would say... This is so hard. That's the art of would you rather. It's supposed uh-huh. to be really hard, so I'm really respecting you. I guess I would, I really, really want to have kids. I guess I would say never fall in love, which... I think I would say that too, which like <sighs> breaks my soul. Yeah, that was good. Isn't that one of the most interesting things is m- my friends and I always n- are so certain about having children, but we're so uncertain about who we'll end up with. Yep. Isn't that so weird? I know. Or like if we'll I, end up with someone. I always thought um, as like a teenager that I only – like I didn't know if I ever wanted to be in love. I wanted a partner who felt really stable because I had a very unstable childhood. Uh-huh. So I feel like all I was looking for was stability. Like I don't necessarily need to be in love. That actually sounds a little more scary. Like I want someone who I get along with and we co – we live together and it works. Yeah. And then obviously I went to therapy and she was like, that's that. No, like actually. I want um, a <laughs> but yeah, I don't I don't know. I've always known I wanted kids. Mm-hmm. And that sounds like the most important. It must be a female thing. thing. Yeah. Like, you know, just I don't know. Anyway, next question. Would you rather never know what's going on on the Internet or never be able to get off your phone like addicted <laughs> to the Internet? I, like, don't really love having a phone. I could get rid of it in one day if I didn't have anything to do on my phone. I would love it. I could just email my friends maybe if I had a computer. <laughs> okay. Um, I would rather never know what's going on on the internet. Okay. I would probably do the same. Yeah. Speaking of the internet, this is a little timely. Would you – this is – I feel bad saying this, but it's, like, such a good would you rather. Would you rather be Bahati Prince Lou or Khloe Kardashian? I read the who? Bahati, um, Bahati? Adam, Adam Levine's wife. Oh. Uh, Do you know what oh happened? Oh my gosh. I know yes, this is yes, an awful yes. question. I would rather be. Like it's a good would you rather, right? Yeah, this is really good. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so let's dissect this. Mm-hmm. Chloe, I feel like she knows what's going on mm. and it and it's kind of like what not judging who knows what's going on behind the scenes but i feel like she's been embarrassed time and time again mm. i feel like adam mm-hmm. levine's wife this is kind of like out of the blue out of the blue she didn't really know any better um and who knows what she's gonna do from this i guess i'd rather be Bahati. Is that her name? Bahati. Mm-hmm. I'd rather be her. Chloe, it's just kind of like, I don't get it, really. I don't know. What do you think about her? <sighs> Chloe, I genuinely feel so I feel so bad for both of them. Yeah. I feel so bad, honestly, for all of the Kardashians and Jenners because I think it's so forking hard to date anyone. Yeah. If, even if you're just a successful female in general. Yeah. Like, not famous. Oh, I think about that all the time. I'm like, if Kylie wasn't with... Tra- like, who else? Who would she date? There's only, like, five people who all famous people can date. There's no one else. Yeah. So, like... And, and there really is, like, a level of fame where, like, only other people with that level of fame, like, fully understand you. Yeah. And fully understand your complaints. And, you know, your struggles and yeah. things like that. Like, I feel like there's... The plethora of men is, like, so small. Yeah. Um, Like, there isn't really a plethora. There's, like, a tiny group. So, 
in that case, I guess I, I feel like Bahati is a, like a little bit more low key. Um, yes, she was a Victoria's Secret model. Yes, she's like still beautiful. I'm sure still killing it. But I think because she's like more low key and like her family doesn't have a reality TV show, like there's just there's more options for her to date yeah. if she wanted to That's move really on true. or whatever. Yeah. So I guess in the same situation, I would rather be Bahati, but yeah. like. I don't know. I love Chloe. I love Good American. I, know. I love. People I think she's so funny. I think she's so kind. I think she deserves the world. Truly, I think all of them do. Um, even Kim. I'm like, who can she date? No, there's no one. Any of them can date, which is why I don't say, "Oh my God, Chloe." I feel like I hear people say, "Like she's so stupid." What is she doing? I just come from the perspective, like I don't know. I yeah. have no clue what's going on. I don't know. It it looks bad. It mm-hmm. looks a little bad. I don't. I have no clue what's going on. Yeah, I feel bad. Yeah. I really do. Um, uh, that's a tough question. I don't yeah. even know if I can, like, fully answer. But but I love Chloe. I love Bahati. I know. She seems so sweet. I want Chloe to, like, I feel like she needs to marry someone funny. I think she's going to come out on top. Do you know I what have I mean? a good feeling. I have a good feeling the next person that she dates is, I, I feel like her, her story is coming. Yes. It's coming. It's yes. coming. It's coming. She's figuring it out. Like, I... Forking get it. I yeah. love an athlete. Yeah. Like, oh my God. If I could like pick anyone, it would be an athlete, right? Oh, really? Oh my God. I love athletes. Yes. Oh my God. I'm Are you? Repulsed. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love an athlete. I don't know. I just, I grew up in a sports family. I get yeah. it. I, I just love it. I find it attractive. I like the work ethic, et cetera. Whatever. But like, at the end of the day, they are known for cheating and sometimes they aren't. They're they're on the road. It's already whether they're going to cheat on you or not. It's like a forking hard relationship to have because they're on the road so much. Yeah. Like it's not a normal job at all. Yeah. I mean, same with like touring and stuff. But I feel like it's a little bit different. I don't yeah. know for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. I I really think Chloe should. I hope that she marries someone or finds someone that is like funny yeah. and has maybe a different job. I hope so too. I think her time's coming. I'm excited for her. Um, I'm also, if he wasn't an athlete, I'd be very interested by that as well. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Not saying my taste is like any better than athletes. I just feel what like is it's your not type? Like my jam. My type is like more embarrassing. It's like, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. My last boyfriend. <laughs> oh my I'm scared. Are you going to say like skater, like emo no. dude? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. What? Like, was like, uh, I'm trying to watch my words on in public. Um, Like, fratty finance bro. Oh, love. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, it's not, like, not embarrassing. Uh, oh, yeah. I would agree. I mean, it is slightly embarrassing, but also it's like, they're really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I just love fun. I love having mm-hmm. fun. They're funny too sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's been my type historically. The current guy I'm dating is nothing like that. Okay. And I'm loving it for myself. I thought you were going to say like one of those like like guys that dresses like cool cooler than me. Do you know what I mean? Where I was like, ooh, like the LA kind. So you're just like, they're a little too, like a little too silver lake for me. I know exactly what, you know what you're talking I mean? about. I'm and not was, really like, cool enough. Yeah, I don't even know where they are. I don't neither. go anywhere that those people I'm are like, either. I shop at Erewhon, but like not in that, in the aisle they're in. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That makes total sense. Anyway, I wish the best for Bahati and Chloe. They both slay. Next one. Would you rather always smell bad or always have something in your teeth? Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh no, I'm re- I'm really, really, really easily embarrassed, like extremely. Oh really? So easily embarrassed. I think everything is embarrassing. I feel like that's so self aware of you. I like I don't think I would ever admit that I'm embarrassed. I'm so easily embarrassed. I one year broke my ankle at Coachella, and I was too embarrassed to say my ankle hurt, so I went the entire day. Just partying and having no. the best time <laughs> because I was too embarrassed to say, you guys, my ankle hurts. So I just like took 10 shots and at the end of the day, I ended up like having to get carried out. No. Which was even more embarrassing. But I'm too embarrassed to say, like if I'm sick, I will lay in my apartment like in and out of fainting before I tell anyone that I'm sick. I'm like so easily humiliated. <laughs> so the thought of smelling bad or something being in my teeth. Well, is that, like, being embarrassed, or is that you not wanting to bother others? 
Both. It feels embarrassing. Okay. It, like, bothering other people feels really embarrassing. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. It's so silly. Everything just, I just get really easily. People say it's a Virgo thing. I don't know if it is, but everything feels really embarrassing to me. Um, like, even if I have to, like, get gas, people are in the car. I don't know why. It just, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to get, it's, everything is embarrassing to me. Living is embarrassing. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. Um, I would rather... Here's the thing about slinging your teeth. I feel like people will tell you, like, oh, you have a little. Yeah. See, I was saying to think I, I would rather have the teeth. I would rather have the teeth because I feel like people are maybe a little bit more embarrassed to tell you that you smell. Also, yeah, smelling bad, too, affects other people. Yes. Like, the teeth thing isn't that bad. That's true. You know what true. I mean? Like, smelling, like, sometimes I'm like, I can't even be around you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, are you the type of person that tells someone when they have something in their teeth? Yes. Always. I am, too. Yeah. Okay. Also, if like a booger, I just pick it out with my own hand. Oh, okay. Like, oh, you have a booger. Oh, just grab it out. That's very sweet of you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Would you rather go through your whole life being the most hilarious person or being the most intelligent? Hilarious. Me too. I don't know if I think I'm like super, super smart. Well, a lot of funny people with. are That's really true. smart. That's actually true. They have the good timing, like comedic really timing, yeah. quick witted, which is ultimately a smart person. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'd rather be So really best funny. of both worlds. Yeah. Okay. Those are all my would you rather questions. Amazing. Those are really good. And those Thank were, you. that's my love language. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, well, next time that's I'll bring more. Language. So I don't know what kind of questions you came up with for me. All right. But I'm scared. Let's get serious in here. Okay. Let's, let's crack these okay. drinks open. <laughs> And you literally come up with the questions for we're not really strangers. So these have to be cheers. Cheers. I've never had these before. You haven't? No. They're pretty good. It's yummy. It's um Shane Mitchell's brand. It's so good. Onda. She's killing it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm calling this TK's hot seat. <gasps> okay. These questions are not deep, but they're very serious. Okay. And I'm taking them very seriously. And if I don't want to answer, I drink. You don't want to answer it, you drink. Okay, so it's like truth or drink. First one, we're starting out easy. So, TK, publicly, you're known for the phrase with the fork. (laughs) Yeah. My question for you is, do you say the word fuck? And if so, will you say it right now? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) You guys, we've (laughs) never heard it before. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Okay. (laughs) No, I actually say, I feel like I say fuck when I'm, like, mad. Yeah. Or I'm, like... Like, I'm actually serious. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, like you that's don't stub weird. your toe and you're like, what the f-? Yeah, I'm not like, fork. <laughs> I honestly, too, I do say fork in real life, but I feel like it's just become, become a habit because in, like, my videos, I said it casually once yeah. in my videos and people were like, I love that. Like, it's so funny. Yeah. And I think it's funny. It's not because I'm, like, necessarily trying to be PG. Yeah. It's just because I think it's hilarious and people think it's funny. Like, people love yeah. saying it, too. Me and Kelsey always say it, too. <laughs> We like like pretend to be you at sticks. Yeah. Okay, second question. Mm -hmm. Getting a little more drama. I want to start some drama. Okay. T. I know you used to live with our good friend Peyton. Mm. I'm here to ask you, what is Peyton's most annoying trait as roommate and friend, as we both know she has them? Ooh. This is one question, not two. Because I'm like, I have it. Let's hear it. Okay. The most annoying thing about Peyton as a friend... It really wasn't much as yeah. a roommate She that bugged me, yeah. honestly, at all. She was the best roommate I've ever had. She just minds her business. Yeah. She's an icon. She and honestly, I feel like I, I'm a lot more, like, talkative and extroverted than she is, but I I kind of mind my own, too. Like, yeah. when I come home, I'm, like, kind of want to do my own thing. Like, we'll catch up, but, like, I don't know. She was the best roommate I've ever had. But um, the most annoying thing about her now is that she, I feel like I'll text her, and it's, like, she's on like planet mars and then like she'll like randomly respond three weeks later yes or like two weeks later and she's like sorry for like not responding to the eight texts you sent <laughs> or yeah, whatever no, same with me but she'll when she three the three weeks later when she does respond she's always like okay let's talk about it and yeah. then i'll tell her and then it's three weeks it's three more weeks. it's like when she's yeah. ready which i yeah. totally understand like yeah. i do that too and also it's kind of hard because it's like i'm trying to catch up and then it's like I also have a work question or whatever and I don't want to bombard her but like I don't know I feel like we would be 
tighter. Like, I want to be able to, like, FaceTime her randomly. Yeah. She's just not that girly. No, she's not that girl. Like, I can't. could not FaceTime her off the cuff. No. If that, it would kind of need you to cannot. be scheduled. No. But when I see her in real life, it's like, we haven't skipped a beat. Exactly. I'm the same way. So do you hear that, Peyton? Yeah. Answer so your phone. Follow, um, like, and we think you're up. annoying. Hit us up. Yeah. <laughs> but love Peyton. Me too. I think she's great. She's awesome. I thought we could crack this open really yeah, quickly. Let's do it. I was telling her over. I was telling TK over text that the funny thing is that I never play this game. Like never. That is crazy. I want to know. Like, how do you come up with questions? I guess I narrow it down from a theme. So, like for example, we have a friendship edition that mm-hmm. I wrote a lot of the questions to, and I, um, I would have different categories. Like, okay, so arguments, fun. Uh, what do we like to do together? What don't I know yet? And I write everything just from like personal experience. So um, I recently had a friend share with me what she thought about my first boyfriend. And while I was writing the questions, I was like, oh, did you have any opinions about my ex that you never told me at the time? It's like things Whoa. like that where it was just like, from personal experiences, you just kind of do categories and then you narrow it down and then you figure it out. So I personally think like writing a good question should never put you on the defense. So it should never be, if you're having a card game that's supposed to get really deep, it should never be, do you have depression? Are you depressed? What does your depression feel like? What is it? Like you could, but that's going to put someone on the defense. You're going to get nervous. Mm. You're going to get anxious. You're not going to know how to answer it. It just put kind of puts you on the spot. I think the best questions that want you to get deep also give you, like, an option to go less deep if you want. So, for example, I'm not going to say, um, how do all your childhood traumas affect you till this day? Right? It's like, that makes me nervous. Mm-hmm. But I might say, um, what was... What were your examples of love growing up? How do those affect your relationships today? It it, it just makes you not. You could say, "Oh, my parents were super loving." Mm, mm-hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be a trauma. Uh, you could say, "Oh, my parents are super loving." I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm looking for for something like that, and maybe I'm a little too picky. Or, mm-hmm. "Oh, my parents were divorced, so I, on, on default, don't want." Like it's just. I think a great question doesn't make you too nervous to answer. Mm. So it's not about necessarily going so deep with the question. It's like the art of crafting it Mm -hmm. to where it puts you at ease. Wow. That's a great, great advice. Even for interviewing. I feel like when I'm coming up with questions, like sometimes I do want to take it deeper, but sometimes the guest like doesn't want to. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. That is really good advice. It's just, it could go either way. You could go this way or that way. Um, I would also say making the answer really specific. Sometimes I hear a question and I could have a hundred different answers, so it actually confuses me. Mm -hmm. But if I have an answer right away, I know it's a great question. And if I ask a bunch of friends and even one person's confused, I I won't use it. Okay. No one should ever be confused by a question. It's not about using big words or making it so intricate. It should be super, super simple and easy to read, which you'll see like on these, like mm-hmm. they are. Should we just start with level three um, or should we do level one first? So level three is like reflection. So it's like based off what we know about each other. Oh, so so maybe level one. two or one. Okay. Let's just start with one. Okay. So level one is about right. assumptions. So like these are essentially assumptions that you would make based off how I look. You, you wouldn't actually necessarily know these okay. answers if you didn't know me. Got it. So, what does my phone wallpaper tell you about me? Oh, I might have to exit out of my Oh, it's a Kanye tweet. It's a Kanye tweet. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the most, like... Interesting. I'm not necessarily the biggest Kanye fan, but... Today will be the greatest day so far. Life keeps getting better and better. I feel like it tells me that you like having this reminder yeah because maybe like i don't know i feel like sometimes we start off like with not necessarily dark thoughts but like i don't know this is like one of those things that's like you need a reminder um i would think you're kind of a kanye fan yeah from the tweet i mean i 
I just, when I wake up in the morning, I look at my phone. I'm just kind of like, I would rather it be like, okay, you know what? Today's going to be the best day ever, even if. Yeah. I also like how this is very simple and to the point. Yeah. Like you seem like uh, what you just said about the questions. Like it's not too intri- intricate. It's not too intense. Like it's just like just your little reminder. Yeah. I think day. I think the most profound things are, are simple, not necessarily like True. confusing. I agree. Okay. So now do I, what do I do? Um, We can do a speed round. So we could either like ask each other the same question or we could just like ask each other different questions. Okay. Do you want to do mine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this ice cream, this is so you. <laughs> you okay? This is what it tells me. You love your friends. You guys go to get ice cream. Mm-hmm. It feels very different for me. Like me and my friends aren't necessarily going to go get ice cream. We're going <laughs> to go like <laughs> blackout yeah. and have a great time mm-hmm. and take our shirts off. This Slay. gives the vibes of like me and my friends. We get ice cream. We take photos. We're having a great time. We live in LA. We're vibing. We have fun. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's a little PG. Sometimes it might get a little spicy. Love. It just, it, 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 it captures your essence, I would say. Thank you. Yeah. And not, I would say that kind of photo could maybe go, um, it could go basic, but I'm not getting those vibes from the photo, actually. Interesting. It doesn't give me like, oh, basic girl who likes ice cream. It gives me complex, it gives me layers. Oh, It gives thank me a double you. scoop. Double yeah. scoop. Gives me a double scoop. <laughs> okay, so now do I go to the next one? Yeah. Okay. What compliment do you think I hear the most? I'd say they have a really nice smile. Thank you. Yes, I do. Get I feel that. like you'd hear that the most. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. I feel like you hear the most. Okay. I feel like you is like, you look like a model. <laughs> like, do people tell you that all the time? Um... Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, yeah, yeah, you look like a model. Mm-hmm. Or you should model. Yeah. So, I feel like being I'm an tall. ally. I'm like super tall. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Do you think I was popular in school? Explain. I feel like you were low key popular. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I feel like you were like everyone now, if someone was in your school and they were like, oh, remember Iman? I would be like, everyone would be like, yeah. Like, they, they knew who the fork you were, but, like, I feel like when you were in school, you wouldn't say you were. But now looking back, you're like, I kind of see it. Yeah, I was friends with a lot of people. I... You also seemed just very easygoing, so, like, you got along with everyone. Yeah, I definitely got along with anyone with anyone and everyone. No enemies. I, I loved high school. Mm-hmm. It was, like, I loved it. I had the best time. Not, not that I would, like, necessarily go back. But I think during high school, I had the best time. I had the best friends. Um, like, I feel like you definitely hung yeah. out with the popular crowd. But, yeah. like, yeah, it wasn't your life. Yeah. Like, no, you also I had was... different crowds you hung out with. Yeah. I was prom queen. Oh, maybe you were more popular than I'm making you out to be. I don't. Yeah. I just, it was so much fun. I just had the best time. That's lit. But fun fact, I, like, never dated in high school. I was the most late bloomer of all time. Okay. Never Never was really having crushes, was never dating. So I wasn't on that side of, like, Mm -hmm. I knew some girls that were super popular because, like, every guy liked them or every guy Mm. this. That wasn't a factor of my high school. No, I... I just had great girlfriends. I think you were a lot more popular than you probably think you are or were. (laughs) I think everyone's like, yeah, we forking know Iman. Like, she slayed high school. (laughs) Slay. (laughs) Um, Do I think you were popular in high school? What an interesting question. Were you an athlete in high school? Did you play tennis? Mm-hmm. You give me tennis girl vibes, like athlete. You give me bubbly. Um, you also give me like you had a close knit group of friends that you didn't necessarily stray from and people knew who you were and people. I think everyone in your high school would be like, she's so sweet. Like she's so nice. <laughs> um, she's so great. Like you just seem like really, really sweet. You seem like you got good grades. Played tennis, hung out with your friends, minded mm-hmm. your business, and you were never mean to anyone. I feel like that's not too far off. I definitely had, like, a bunch of different friend groups. Like, yeah. I was, like, in, like, a environmental club. And then I was also in, like, I can see dance that. marathon. But then I was also, like, I also cheered. Yeah. So I was, like, with the athletes. I don't know. Yeah. I can see that. hmm I see that, actually, okay, more. cool. Love yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can do one more and then go to level two. Yeah. If MySpace were still a thing, what would my profile song be? 
definitely a cool like oldies like hip hop song. Like I'm thinking like a not the typical Snoop Dogg song, but like classic. Oh my god, drop it like it's hot is actually my karaoke song. Something like yeah. like uh, that everyone knows and it's like, oh that's sick, but like um not like something too basic. Oh my god, my ex boyfriend just texted me. Or like Dr. Dre. Wait, really? Yeah. Maybe like a Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Oh my God, stop. What? He wants you back. So, LOL, I'm using your dad for my car loan. He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> this is piping hot tea. Anyways. Yeah, I know he's the best. Anyways. <laughs> I feel like the modern day equivalent is like, what's your Raya song? I think it's got to be like Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre or something cool <sighs> like that. Uh, maybe, I don't. I think you're giving me more cool points than I actually have. Really? I know a lot of music, but I don't think I'm the girl with like the coolest playlist. Like I, my best friend has really cool music taste. So every six months she makes me a playlist of songs that I just need to know. Mm. But I'm just like a, I'm kind of like a basic Swifty. Was it like, oh, I was going to say like Dua Lipa. <laughs> no, no, I don't like Dua Lipa, but I mean, no offense to okay, Dua Lipa. Okay, Swifty. I'm like a huge Swifty. This is interesting. I was going to yeah. say like Laney, like... I know. Okay, Swifty. I'm a Swifty. I'm not a huge music. I don't listen. Like a lot of times in the car, I'll just call my friends or I'll listen to nothing. Like all too well, ten minute version. Yeah. Okay, I it's, love that. It's, it's that bad. Are you like so thrilled um, about the new album? I'm so excited. Me too. I'm so excited. Um, I love. Um, yeah, you would actually be. I would probably on my MySpace. I would try to project a cool version of myself. So I would do a song like okay. what you're saying. Um, for you. I hope you don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is it going to be? A-team Ed Sheeran. <laughs> no. <laughs> it gives, um, like... <laughs> You're going to LOL when you hear my Raya song. Okay, continue. Just say it. I can see, like, what your MySpace song being... Firework Katy Perry. <laughs> I can see it being Call Me Maybe Carly Rae Jepsen. I can okay. see it being Back to December Taylor Swift. Okay. I can see it being um Fair enough. I see I see why you see this. Yeah, I can see it's Michelle Branch. If we're talking MySpace days, you know who that is? No. Oh, maybe you're Who's Michelle Branch? Twenty. Okay. Um, <laughs> she or or like a Vanessa Carlton, okay, love. like that kind yeah. of songs, mm, okay, that kind of music. My song on Raya is, believe it or not, September Earth, Wind, and Fire, and it's the twenty first. It is the twenty first of September. Okay, that's my favorite. Song. Iconic, is it really? Mm -hmm. Love it. You also seem like if I brought you to like a party with like <laughs> all my like. <laughs> like family you would know like the oldie yes like black music yes like you give me the vibes of you would fit in no like i listen i feel like my music taste is confusing like it doesn't match my like the way i seem on the internet like i literally listen to like tupac yeah that's what i'm saying like dr dre snoop dogg like i listen to that stuff all the time <laughs> that's really really funny <laughs> it's really I, confusing I, would, I can i can see you in your car actually throwing some people off yeah yeah mm-hmm like when it. in Euphoria, Slay. when um like she's rapping to that Tupac song, I like already knew the words. I was like, oh my god, I love the song. That is so it's funny. surprising. I love that for you. Have you ever told someone I love you but didn't mean it? If so, why? I feel like I don't really say I love you much in general. Have you been in like a long term relationship before? Yeah, I think I said I love you then, and I thought I was in love, but like. Now looking back, I'm like, I wasn't. I yeah. just was like trying to like play the part. Yeah. So I guess that. Yeah. But did you feel like in love in the moment? Or do you feel like you were just saying it? I guess I did kind of feel in love in the moment. Yeah. I guess like for a first love. But now looking back, I'm like, I, I definitely had like blinders on. Yeah. Like I was just like, oh, he likes me so much. And like, I like the idea of him. That's always the number one way that I know if people aren't super into who they're dating. I feel like if you say like, well, what do you love about them? It's like, oh, they he likes me so much. 
if you say that as the first thing, it says nothing about him. It says nothing about you. It says nothing about mm-hmm. how you guys feel about each other. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, he likes me so much. Mm-hmm. It's always like the number one indicator to me. Yeah. I think I was just like, all right, it's time for me to have a... I'm like the type. I'm like, it's time for me to have a boyfriend. Like, I'm going to figure it out. Like, yeah. and I think that's what I was doing versus yeah. like actually being like head over heels for the person. Yeah. Like, I would never date him now. No offense. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I feel like every relationship shows you, like, a greater, like, better, deeper love than you felt before. Mm-hmm. So I feel like every new boyfriend I've had, I'm like, oh, I wasn't in love with my last one. Mm-hmm. But it, it felt real in the moment. I definitely do. It's weird. I feel more comfortable saying, like, love you to people I don't really know or, yeah. or love Yeah. versus, like, people I actually do love. Like, it's, like, terrifying for me to say. Even, really? like, to, like, family members. That. Like, I'm uncomfortable. I can say that for you. Really? Yeah. Like, even on the phone, I'm dead ass. Like, when my parents are like, love you, I'm like... Really? I can see you getting on your Uber and being like, love you. Yeah, literally. And your mom's like, love you. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Gotta go. Yeah, like, actually. What about you? I've never said I love you and didn't mean it. Um, my first boyfriend said I love you, like, continu- continuously for three months before I said it back because I, like, really waited until I felt it. So I, oh, good for I've you. I've always been That's a person who of you. will... <laughs> <laughs> is it not? <laughs> it is. Me and Peyton are pretty similar. We, I do not say I love you just to say it. I don't say it for fun. Mm. I don't think it's a joke. Um, I'll wait until I feel it. Got it. So you won't, like, you're not the type of girl, like, yelling out of an Uber. You'll be like, I love you. I will, no. I mean, I'll tell my Uber driver I love you. Like, I'll say it to my, fr- I don't, I'm not really an I love you kind of girl either. If I'm in a relationship, I say it, like, 20 times a day, but. I guess I, I don't really say it, like, really? unless it's literally a stranger. Wow. Do you yeah. say it to your friends? It like kind of, sca- I think it scares me. I'm like, oh, like I'm uncomfortable really? talking about it. Yeah, genuinely. I'm, it's weird. I'm like, wow. Oh, oh. Like I'm like scared to admit I have feelings. <laughs> Emb- See, you're relating to my easily embarrassed. Yeah, embarrassed, yeah. That's interesting. There was a question that I skipped past and it was, do you think that the image of yourself other people see you as matches the image you see yourself and I feel like yours is very different yeah Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it reigns true but also there's a whole other side that I feel like people don't fully understand like even I've been struggling it's so weird I feel like people on the internet like I put so much on on the internet but I'm like y'all don't really know me yeah which is crazy. I mean, I've only known you on the internet, and I feel like you're so different now oh, than I really? would expect. That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like also, though, once you know me and now you see the way I, yeah. like, present myself on the internet, you'll be like, okay, this makes sense. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, like, it, I love getting deep with people, but, like, it scares me to, like, that's why I love interviewing. Like, I don't like being the one interviewed mm. or people are asking juicy questions, too. Yeah. I like asking the juicy questions. Yeah. I like me the like hot making seat. Were people. Were you nervous in my hot seat? Yes. Like, I like making people uncomfortable. Yeah. And, like, taking it to the next level with them. I don't like being the one that's, like, <laughs> I like being in control. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very okay with being uncomfortable. Like, any question anyone throws at me, I feel like nothing feels too deep or, like, too crazy to answer. Mm. Um. But also it's the nature of like what I do just in life. Like all my coworkers, we all know everything about I love each that. other. We all it gets it gets real. We cry, we laugh. See, I love that. It's very it's very intense, but it's very fun. I feel like lately I've been realizing though that this is like actually kind of sad. Like I'm the person that asks so many questions. I'm like so curious mm-hmm. that I'm like Sometimes I've lately I've been noticing I'll like try to not ask as many and just see if someone asks me shit because mm. some most of the time they won't and then we just won't have a conversation. Yeah, and I'm like, that's really hard for me in friendships if people don't ask a lot of questions because I don't know. I just it's nice to feel like someone's curious about you and your life. It's just like a good feeling rather mm-hmm. than everyone just talking about themselves because I know I'm really curious and I want to know everything. Mm-hmm. I, when I lived with Kelsey. I would ask her like one new question every night that I just didn't know. Sometimes it would just be like, do you like pick like pickle juice? <laughs> just because I it was like I already knew so many things I had uh-huh. to keep. I'm like, how do you feel like just all the time was a new mm-hmm. question because I just needed to know her just so deeply. And I feel like that's how I just am in life. But yeah, it would be a turn off that, for me if that's people how I weren't am too. asking me questions. I feel like that's genuinely why I'm kind of going through a quarter life crisis because I'm realizing shit like that. I'm like, yeah. 
do they ever ask me questions? Yeah. Or like, does so-and-so, like, would we talk if I didn't call first? Mm, yeah. Or like, would we hang out if I didn't make the move? Or if I didn't have a cool job that presents cool events that you would want to come to? Like, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah, realizing things. It's the year yeah. realizing things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's real. Mm-hmm. That's real. Okay, should we do another question or take it to the next level? Yeah, we could do one more level two. One more level two. Level this three. is great. Such a good game. Everyone needs to buy it. I like this. If you could get to know someone. <laughs> I read really slow. I feel like the only thing I can't read. <laughs> if you could get to know someone in your life on a deeper level, who would it be and why? I don't know. Do you know? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'll think. I would say one of the areas in my life I've in my life that I feel like I have a really hard time with is being a good sister. Like, I feel like I'm always there for my friends. If my friends have a birthday, Mm. if my friends need something, I call my friends. I, my call log every single day is like 10 of my friends and I'm just on the phone on a loop. And I like, don't know that much about my sisters that I like grew up with or, Mm. or my sister that I, I have multiple sisters, but I grew up with one of them. And I feel like I could be such a better big sister, but I have such a weird block from it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Something about family I have a hard time with. Whereas friends, I can like go as deep as possible. Family, I have a much harder time. And I think it's something that I like have a lot of guilt around. And like I'm super insecure about like if anyone asked me about my sister, someone was like, oh, no, I, I need to call her. I have no clue. Uh-huh. I don't know. OK, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Um, and I, I can feel them craving that from me, but I just, it it's really hard for me to go there. Mm. So I wish I could go, I could have a deeper connection with my sisters, but I don't, I don't know how to go. Like even in therapy, I try to work it out. I just, I'm like, maybe my calling in life is like not to be the most stand up older sister. I don't, I don't know how yeah, to figure yeah. that out, but I have a really hard time with that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's a good that's a good answer. I don't know why I, when while you were talking, I had like a bunch of like random people yeah. like flashing through my head. My first one was like my friend Annie. She just texted me, but like my childhood friend. Yeah, I feel like I know like everything about how she was raised and why she is the way yeah. she is and her siblings and blah 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 blah. But I feel like now because when we catch up, like it's so so little. Mm-hmm. Like when I actually see her, when we actually catch up or when we actually talk on the phone, it's like, OK, what would you do today? W- who are the men in your life? And yeah. like what's going on in our hometown drama? Like it's I feel like yeah. now I don't know her the way I used to. And I would love to like, I guess, know her on a deeper level now. Yeah. I think that's the interesting thing about friends that you grew up with where it's like, I know your parents names. I go to your house and open like up the refrigerator. Yeah. I can make myself a sandwich Literally. at your parents' house. But like, do I know like what made you sad the last last week? I have n- I have mm-hmm. no fucking clue. Or even like, uh, if your boss is a bitch, like you yeah. know what I mean, or random like shit like that, or like your go to coffee shop now, yeah. or like I don't know things that are prominent in your life. Yeah, like I feel like I could do a better job digging in that area. Yeah, cool. What's your favorite expansion pack, by the way? I love our self reflection pack, uh-huh. um, and it comes with a journal. And a pen. I need to get that. It's I I love that one. Okay. Like it's really nice to just do one question just every even few weeks. Like, I need it's to not do like that. You just do it, but I love the self reflection because I feel like I learn things about myself. Um, and my most recent actual game that we put out that I like the most of anyone that we've put out, I think, is our kids edition. But I like play it with my friends it's like for big and little kids but what I love about it and kind of like to what I was speaking to earlier is that the most profound questions to me are just so simple Mm -hmm. and our kids edition is so simple it's like what are you really really good at so simple but it's just so fun to play with friends because it's just to the point you're not thinking about your answers but then it like can get deep Mm -hmm. but then it I just it feels so fun it's like written in crayons and it's just really really fun I need to get that one too I love it. And it's really fun to play with friends randomly because it's also like, what do you love to eat when you come home from school? Cute. <laughs> You're like lunchable, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Maybe here, you choose a level three. Okay. Oh, this is good. Okay, let's hear it. What about me is hardest for you to understand? I think in general, like 
any of my friends with just like an online presence feels so scary to me. Mm-hmm. Like just that life feels really scary to me. Um, just broadcasting like what you do and stuff mm-hmm. feels really scary. So I don't really think I understand like it's more like how, <laughs> but also I guess um, I don't think you put out a very specific persona. I think like your personality is perceived very specifically by people online, me especially. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would love to see a little bit more of like um, what I've seen today. A oh, bit okay. More realness. Interesting. A bit more realness. I think I feel like you would maybe see that in my vlogs. Really? Yeah. Okay. On YouTube. Okay. Like I just cr- I just uploaded a video of me crying. Okay. On my YouTube. Okay. I, it's just like I feel like Instagram and TikTok. I could do a better job of that for sure. TikTok. I feel like especially people love like real, real and like mm-hmm. off the cuff. The most niche specific people. Like there's this one girl who. Um, gets lice out of people's hair for a living and she does lice killing ASMR Stop. and she gets like so many views but she's in her lane she does the lice Niche. and that's that's all she does so I feel but also it's like so specifically her yeah okay so, yeah I love that what about so it'd be like what about you is hardest for me to understand yeah. this is a tough question Genuinely, the Taylor Swift Swifty thing is really shocking me. I know. I know. I don't tell people that. I don't say that publicly. Okay. Because I, I understand the being embarrassed about everything. Yeah. I think it's more so like you not wanting to bother others and to like make their make them have to stop what they're doing to help you. I think that's what maybe bothers you more than you actually being embarrassed. Yeah. So I understand that. What's hard for me to understand is like, I guess how much of a Swifty you are. You must be like uh, emotionally related to her like thing with men. I just I just feel like her lyrics are so real and no one else does that. Where all of her songs, you know who it's about, what they did to her, how she felt about it. I feel like no one's ever that real in their music, which is also just like the tea of it's really fun to Mm -hmm. me. Not that I necessarily relate to all of her music, but I'm like. This is good. You know what makes sense, though, is you know how you're saying how, like, the best question is, like, the most simple and to the point and, like, not overanalyzed or overthought? Like, that's what her music is. Yeah. It's literally, like, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. (laughs) Like, it's so cliche, but it's so, it hits. Yeah, I think. So that makes sense. I love, I'm a folklore girly. Like, dead ass, though, I never in a million years would have, like, been, like, you're such a Swifty. Like, I feel yeah. like people think I'm such a Swifty. Probably. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, that's Which not, I am, but, like, yeah. not to the point you are, I feel. I'm, I'm a huge Swifty, so. This is my official telling the world, Coming actually. out. This yeah. is my official coming <laughs> right, out. Swifty. I have never, I don't really tell people. I'm a huge Swifty, so. Oh, you know what else is hard for me a little bit to understand? which I know there's like a whole deeper route to this, so it's slightly ignorant of me to say, is like, because I'm so close with my sibling, yeah. I'm like, that's hard for me to understand you not yeah. being, or being uncomfortable to be like, I don't know, yeah. how it kind of makes you like. I feel super comfortable in front of my siblings. Mm-hmm. Like we laugh at all the, or my, whatever. I, I feel comfortable in front of them. Like we have fun, we laugh, but they, I have a really hard time sharing personal things. And also when they tell me about boys or anything, I'm always like, ooh, like, ooh, I can't hear it. Like, I don't want to. Oh, I, there's really? just a weird block. We don't hug. We don't say I love you. It's just bizarre. But it's also, I think, maybe the way, like, I was raised. Um, so well, I, don't I don't really hug or say I love you to my brother, but, like, okay. we're, bu- like, you guys we're besties. Just, yeah. I don't know. It's just Like, tough. I'll be like, oh, my God, this guy texted me, like, blah, 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 blah. And he'll be like, say this. <laughs> say this no we don't talk about that <laughs> really no questions whatsoever okay it's just i don't really get it either i feel like i'm able to be so open with just a random person on the street but when it comes to my f- sisters or like kind of family i'm really really close with my dad i tell him everything like sex dating oh wow everything my dad knows it all anyone else i can't do it it's the weirdest thing okay yeah Interesting. The more you know. The more you know. Okay, next question. What can I help you with? Oh, that's interesting. I know. 
These are so good. I'm like, this is a crazy game. <laughs> like you literally made it. I've like, I haven't played in a really long time. I'm like, oh, that's a good question. Um, well, for one, I feel like we should hang out. Yeah. I feel like that'd be really, really fun. I agree. Okay, two things. For one, I feel like you're really active. Mm-hmm. I haven't moved a muscle in years, <laughs> decades. Okay. I feel like maybe we could do something fun. We could, we could go, go on a hike. A walk. Yeah. Even that sounds so terrible to me. I don't even, as I'm saying it, I don't want to go. Okay. We'll make it fun. Um, we could do something like that. Just, you know, get me outside. Let's get each other working out. I love that. Um, I can do that. I think, you know, also, you seem very social. Mm-hmm. You seem like you love being out. You seem like you know, you know how to have a good time. I also know how to get, have a good time, but I have like terrible social anxiety. So I've had the same friends for my entire adult life and I don't go out without at least one of them. Oh, I do okay. not have new friends. I'm nervous by everyone. And I feel like it really? might come off as me not being friendly, which I'm, I'm friendly. I just, every like, I always feel like I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm like, well, I don't know what your opinion is on this thing that I'm about to say. So what if you actually don't agree? I'm like always like just so nervous by everyone. I've never gotten that vibe from you. Though. Really? Like you just talking to you via DM. Maybe it's because like, you know me through Peyton. You're a little more yeah, comfortable. Yeah, I'm like, okay, well, I don't. Uh, yeah, I just, I have. I also don't want anyone to know that about. Like, I'm not like, it's kind of like fake it till you make it. Like, I'm Copy. just like, yeah, whatever. But in my brain, I'm like, oh my God, did I say the wrong thing? So I think we could... Maybe be social. Mm-hmm. Maybe go outside. Love. <laughs> <laughs> Take a few steps. Maybe we could like meet people going outside. Yeah. Yeah. We could do something like that. I got this. Yeah. I, I can totally help with that. Yeah. Okay. I think what you can help me with is like being more real with how I'm actually feeling instead of like putting on my like, it's fun. I'm grinding. Like, I don't have time to think about that. Like, yeah. Um, oh, we have work to do. Yeah, like getting more yeah. deep, being more real, being more vulnerable, like with my persona on the internet, things like that. I feel like people are going to watch this and be like, Tika is completely different. Like, I'm not that different. No, 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 it's no. just I'm more yeah. like, I feel like li- literally I no one asks me deep questions different. like that. I don't think you're different. I think, like, from on- what I can gather about you not knowing about you online mm-hmm. seems one way, which I feel like you absolutely are. But mm-hmm. then just knowing you deeper, I'm like, oh. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's not that you're different from your online. I feel like it's, you're exactly like that, but it's just more. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've, it's just genuinely so rare when someone's asking me any type of question. Like really? I'm the one that's always driving a conversation. I'm always like, how can I help you? What can I do to make this better? Yeah. Like, I, you know, uh, what's going on with work that I can help with? Or how can we come up with ideas for your whatever? Like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm very rarely the one um, where someone's like <laughs> asking questions about me or asking like how to help me. I have a lot and of I questions. Don't know. You're like, you're so good at that. Thank you. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Um, okay. What do you think my weakness is? I mean, I guess I kind of just touched on one uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I think you can be very overtly like friendly mm. and nice to people and very fast friends, but I think yeah. it might throw you off. To to then be, like, met with someone who's, like, actually trying to get to know you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of what your weakness is. Like, if be. you got out of your Uber and you were, like, love you, and he was, like, love you back, like, love you too, I almost feel, like, the, it's, like, you want to do that role. Mm-hmm. And then when you're met with it back, I could see you, it could th- I could see it throwing you off. Yes. Yeah. That is so true. Okay. What would your weakness be? I feel like your weakness is letting people help you. Yeah, I don't want anyone to help me. It's too embarrassing. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. It's like, I get I'm it. I'm struggling. But also, like, that's what, like, friends are for. Yeah, I mean, luckily, my closest friends intuitively know what I need at all times, mm-hmm. um, which is really, really nice. Because um, I never have to ask for anything. Just everyone knows. And I that is, like, the best coolest thing in the world to me Mm because I've always felt so misunderstood my whole life and I feel like I have friends that like I don't have to say anything I don't have to do anything it's just like they intuitively know exactly what I need to hear or if I need 
someone to come over or if I need, like it just I never have to ask mm. for anything love those so are the best really nice. friends when you yeah. can just sit on the couch don't have to talk oh yeah we don't talk yeah it's yeah. the best okay last two if you could prescribe me with one thing to do for the rest of this month what would it be and why I would say one go on more dates okay I mean yeah I agree I would say try to learn just once a week one thing about a friend that you don't already know, like Annie or oh, that's good. anyone. Just try to know like them even 5% better, even mm-hmm. 1% better. I love that's that. That's what I would say. Okay, for you, I would say <laughs> once a week. Go outside to oh do my God. something. I can't, like, already when you say that, I'm like, no. So it doesn't even have to be, like, a walk. Like, it can be, like, oh, you go outside to to walk to get your coffee. Or, like, instead of making it at home. Or instead of ordering your groceries or know, ordering your right. food. Yeah. Like, you, like, go outside to do something. Does that make sense? The most ironic part of this all is that I have a Peloton treadmill next to my bed. Like, it's in my room. Mm-hmm. And I, the hump of getting onto it is like huge like it feels like it, fe- it feels really hard i don't know why i just i need to but once i do it i'm like are you stupid like that was so easy i know i just have the hardest time or i have an even harder challenge once a week you go outside all you have to do is walk one mile but during the mile walk you're on the phone with your sister oh my god that's good, <laughs> that right? That is really good. That is good. <laughs> and that might take me some time. I'll I'll try to I'll do it at least once this month. Mm-hmm. I'll do Just it. Just call and be like, "What shows are you watching right yeah. now?" I'll do it. Wow, that was good. Or just vent. That was good. Mm-hmm. That was good. Okay, last I'll, one. I'll give it to you. What would make you feel closer to me? I would love to go to dinner with you. Me too. <laughs> I would love that. Like somewhere like kind of like fun. I think that would be so fun. I think we should go. Mm-hmm. I would love to do that. I would. I think it would be so fun. I think it would be so fun too to like, I think there's so many times when Peyton was my roommate that like, it'd be like, oh, like let's go out or yeah. whatever. But like actually the next time when like Kelsey or Peyton or whatever, they're in town, like us all going out would be so fun. I would or love to a that. dinner too on top of our solo dinner. Anyway, Iman, this has been an absolute pleasure finally getting to meet you in real life and learning all of your just amazing insight of what you've done with the brand. And I don't know, you're such an awesome person to be around already. Thank you. So thanks so much for coming here. Of course. And where can people follow you and follow the brand and get the game? Um, my, oh. <laughs> my personal Instagram is just my name at Iman Abdullah, mm-hmm. Iman, E-M-O-N. Um, and this is at We're Not Really Strangers. You can get it on our website, Amazon, Target, Urban Outfitters, Barnes & Noble, a few other places I might be missing, but. Legit the most fun game ever. It is really fun. Mm-hmm. And I should. Yeah, I should. This is like I should. This is my wake up call. I should be playing this more too as well. I know. I feel like I need to bring this to like the bungalow. Oh my god! And just like ask random like <gasps> that's actually really finance funny. bros like that's questions. funny. We should actually do that together. And film a TikTok. <laughs> we should do that. That would be. Can you With imagine? Like, I'd be down. We we should go. Yeah, that's hilarious. The question is like, are we about to kiss right now? <laughs> Literally, everyone would be like, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, everyone go follow her. Get the game. It's so easy and fun to play. And if you want to link with Iman for whatever reason, hit her up in the DMs. And be sure to make someone's day this week. Love y'all. Mwah.